in discussions of Islamic terror, very often this idea comes up of who are the real Muslims? Is anyone who says they are a Muslim a real Muslim? Is anyone who says they are inspired by their interpretation of the Quran, for example, a Muslim? Or can we write off anyone who commits an atrocity under the name of Islam as being, quote, not really Muslim? This is a conversation that I actually had with Mark Sandlin back in 2013. What is real Christianity? And it is so relevant now in the context of these discussions of, well, are they real Muslims or not? Is the candidate a true Christian or not? So we're going to go back to my great, great conversation with Mark Sandlin from October of 2013. Let's take a look. I'm joined today by former Navy Chaplain Gordon Klingenschmidt. Check out his website, PrayInJesusName.org. Also joined by Reverend Mark Sandlin. Mark is a Presbyterian minister, co-founder of the Christian Left, also blogs for the Huffington Post and a number of other publications. Gentlemen, it's really great to have both of you here today. Uh, you know, you may not know this, but my audience certainly does. I am not an expert in Christianity. I was uh, uh, born into a Jewish family and raised re relatively secular, but it's impossible to ignore that Christianity is very involved in the politics of the United States, so it's a topic that we often discuss. So I want to go first to the chaplain. Chaplain, you know, you and I have talked about a variety of issues. We've talked about gays and gay marriage, abortion, the teaching of evolution, um, Obamacare, single-payer health care, poverty. What do you think right now should be the most important and, and paramount issues to American Christians in the political system? Well, thank you, David, for having me on your show once again, and God bless you and God bless your listeners in Jesus' name. Uh, as a former Navy chaplain, uh, I believe in the Constitution of the United States. I'm an Air Force Academy graduate. I defend the First Amendment, uh, among all the other constitutional amendments, and religious freedom is a critical issue that the church and my constituents are very concerned about. So now, sadly, under the Obama administration, I feel like, and many of my friends, feel like Christian values are under attack and being legislated out of existence by the liberals in the Obama administration who want to for example, redefine traditional marriage instead of, as Jesus defined it, between one man and one woman. They want to pass uh, the defense, uh, you know, strike down the Defense of Marriage Act, enact the ENDA bill, Employment Not Discrimination Act. Uh, and we've seen this trend going on for many years. This is not new to anyone in your audience. But you asked me, what are some of the critical issues? Well, uh, no, I mean, I think that's that's good in the interest of getting Reverend Mark in, because that right there was chock full of stuff that I'm sure he wants to address. So, uh, Reverend Mark, for, yeah. just even on the basis, do you agree with the, with with Chaplain Klingenschmidt's assessment that Jesus made it clear what a marriage should be, or do you do you disagree there? Yeah, um, I would have to obviously, I think, disagree with that. Uh, anyone who follows us on the Christian left knows that we believe that biblically, there's actually all kinds of representations of what blessed relationships look like in God. Uh, particularly when when that kind of language is used to uh, kind of deny rights to folks who are who are uh, in same sex relationships, so I think it's pretty clear that Jesus was much more interested in love and bringing people together and uh, in relationships where people trust each other and care for each other and promote the greater good through it. So you don't believe that the do do you think let's let's to address the chaplain's other assertion there yeah. do you think there has been a significant change in terms of religious freedom under President Obama? Uh, religious freedom, I would think, actually has been opened up. Uh, we've seen more and more acceptance of a greater variety of um, of religions. I applaud chaps for uh, his defending the rights of other religions uh, on the naval ships to practice their religion. And I think that's what we ought to be doing in the U.S. Rather than trying to legislate our particular beliefs, we need to be trying to look for higher moral grounds and open up the platforms so that more and more religions are respected and accepted and aren't having other people's perspectives forced on them. Chaplain, feel free to, to, to jump in. Well, thank you. Um, as a conservative, traditional Christian, uh, you know, some people may say that I'm on the Christian right. Uh, my partner here, uh, Reverend Mark, is on the Christian left, or so he describes himself. 
Uh, I want to suggest that the definition of Christian, we need to be very careful about this, should be somebody who follows Jesus Christ, somebody who agrees with Jesus, and somebody who believes the Bible. I think a lot of people out there on the so-called left are trying to call themselves Christian, but at the same time, they don't believe in Jesus Christ, they don't let him rule their heart and mind, and they don't believe the Bible. Jesus Christ defined marriage between one man and one woman, and people who disagree with that should not call themselves Christians or followers of Jesus. And, and David and Chaps, I think this is what this type of conversation always ends up, unfortunately, unraveling to is who gets to call themselves Christian and who, who doesn't, and who owns the right interpretation of what Jesus said and what Jesus didn't say. And I, and I think right there at the end, you did a very important hermeneutical move in, in pointing to the fact that Jesus was using the Old Testament, his Jewish uh, Holy Scripture to understand things too. So I think we have to look at all of it. And so I, I, th I think it's a little dogmatic and a little limiting when we, we, we pick one verse, we quote it, and say that it represents a full understanding of who we're supposed to be or what Jesus taught, because Jesus grew up with all these other Scriptures as well, and He frequently referred to them and they informed who He was. So I, I don't particularly get into having a debate of who's Christian and who's not. I, I think that that's a little presumptive. To propose an, an, another topic through, the, through which we can kind of explore the differences in our views here, uh, the, the chaplain brought up the issue of marriage equality. I want to talk a little bit about health care. There has been a significant conservative Christian movement against the Affordable Care Act, kind of colloquially known as Obamacare. And further, there's also been sentiment that single-payer health care or health care for all would somehow not be in line with Christianity for some reason. I'll go first now to Reverend Mark. Yeah. Reverend Mark, is your sense that the, the Jesus view would be mm -hmm. everyone should be provided with some basic level of health care, or is that not the, the, a proper interpretation? A few things I notice about Jesus. Anytime anyone asks for health care, Jesus gave it to them. So just from practice, I would say that something was important to Jesus. Now, the argument is usually that, yeah, well, Jesus didn't force the government to do it. Well, what Jesus was really doing was making sure that those in need had it. So I would say if we're capable of making sure that folks who need health care had it without the government's intervention, then that's great. The reality is we haven't. Chaplain, you've been very outspoken against Obamacare. How, how do you, uh, what do you think of Reverend Mark's comments? Well, I agree with uh, his sentiment that God should be the healer. We should look to God for our healing and not to the government. I think, sadly, uh, the socialist left has now been trying to replace private charities and Christian hospitals or, or regulate them into obscurity uh, or even to take over with government power some of the things that Christians have been doing for a thousand years. I believe in free market enterprise. I believe in private charity. Sadly, since President Obama has been elected, 4.9 million working class Americans have lost their health care insurance between ages 25 and 64. And that hurts everybody's ability to have health care. So socialism is not a, a way to give more health care. Socialism actually takes health care away from people and it's anti-Christian. Uh, when I pray for the sick, by the way, I was in India last year. I preached 34 times in 35 days in four, four cities. We prayed for the sick, and by the power of God, people were healed, and we saw a miracle. So I think God should be the healer, and we should not look to government as if it is a God. Mark, I think there's probably a lot you would want to say to that, but because, the, because we have limited time and Chaplin has kind of opened the door to, to discussing something else, the yeah. chaplain has, has talked about faith healing, and we've okay. had cases where people, parents have actually now had to face charges for providing only faith healing and no traditional medical treatments to their kids. The chaplain on my program has also talked about exorcisms and that he personally, with about a 50% success rate, has been able to exercise the homosexuality out of people. Is that in line with your understanding of Christian teachings, or does that sound like something that is outside of Christianity? Um, I think there's two different questions going on there. One is healing, and one is exercising. Um, and and I'll, I'll say right up front, I have certainly never been privileged to be in the presence of any of that actually happening in, in a way that I could verify that that was what occurred. So from a purely experiential uh, point of view, it's difficult for me to completely 
understand, although we have biblical text of, of, of healings, of course, I've never seen it, and I've never seen it particularly verified. Um, for those who, who, who would like to replace health care with uh, biblical healing or, or, or praying for someone to heal, I would challenge them to drop their own health care and not go to a hospital and just pray about it. I, I suspect long run we're going to decide not to do that. And then, have, as, yeah, the exorcism, because like I said, the chaplain says he has this 50% success rate that a lesbian once wept and then was no longer interested in other women. And he has a lot of these stories, sure. which to some people seem hard to believe. Yeah, I think that that comes down to a basic understanding of why a person has attraction to the same, uh, someone of the same sex. You know, are you, do you believe that it is a, a, a possession of the devil? Or do you believe that as science is slowly beginning to show us some signs of that there's also parts of that that has to do with how we're wired in our DNA and our structure and who we are, and, so, and some about uh, our environment and the people that we find ourselves attracted to. So, Chaplain, feel free to address that. I know this is a, uh, an important topic to you. I don't want to mischaracterize my position. Uh, I think Reverend Mark suggested that I'm against health care because I believe believe God is the healer. That's not what I said at all. Uh, I'm in favor of health care. I'm a member of the Knights Hospitallers, which is the, the organization, the Knights of Malta, that founded the first hospitals, which they just unearthed in Jerusalem over a thousand years ago. Uh, with regard to exorcism, here's, here's what Jesus taught, right? And you read his Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, especially in Matthew 10, where Jesus commanded his disciples, and I try to be one of his disciples, to heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons, raise the dead. And that doesn't mean we have the power to do that, but we should try and we should certainly uh, pray that God will give us that power to heal people who, who are ruled by demons. Not everybody's ruled by a demon. There's not a demon behind every bush, but there is perhaps uh, an evil influence behind every human sin. And when you can't define sin, oh, there is no such thing as sin, then of course you don't believe in the devil. But if you believe the Bible, if you believe what Jesus says, there is right and wrong, the devil is influencing people to sin, and the Spirit of God is influencing people to choose holiness, then every, in every human moral decision, you have an opportunity to agree with God or to disagree with God, to agree with the devil or disagree with the devil. And those are just natural choices that people make in the context of human morality every day. That's why sexual immorality, because it is defined as wrong outside of the context of traditional marriage between one man and one woman, sexual immorality is a temptation. It's a sin. And therefore, we consent to allow the devil to rule that part of our life, and we can renounce that. We can walk away from that. It's not part of your DNA. And David, we've talked about Punnett squares and Mendelian genetics and how homosexuality cannot be inherited because when a man mates with another man, they don't have kids. And so the only way they have uh, is to recruit the children of heterosexual couples into that movement, and therefore it's not genetic, it's not biological, it is a moral choice, and therefore it can be repented of, and you can invite God to rule that part of your heart. Reverend Mark, is this discussion of, of, uh, of homosexuality as, as a chosen sin and everything else that the chaplain is talking about, is, to you, is, is this a productive area for Christianity to focus? Uh, no, and I, and I actually, within my own denomination, have this discussion. Is that, frankly, even if uh, you think that the English interpretation of the Bible uh, is literally a correct uh, translation in, in the places that it addresses uh, homosexual relationships, which is only seven, in general, the Bible is disinterested in this subject, and we put probably more than 50% of our time, it would seem, into dealing with this issue. Uh, I think it's a distraction from what we should be doing, which is uh, seeking justice and equality, trying to encourage people to work towards peace and getting along with their neighbors no matter what they look like. All right. Well, gentlemen, I think we've said it all. We've been speaking to former Navy chaplain Gordon Kling Klingenschmidt. Check out his website, PrayInJesusName.org. Also, Reverend Mark Sandlin, who's a Presbyterian minister. He's the co-founder of The Christian Left and blogs on Huffington Post and elsewhere on the Internet. Thanks to both of you for joining me today. Thank you, David, and thank you, Mark. God bless you in Jesus' name. You too, David and Chaps. Good to see you.